Hello, and welcome to tonight's news. I'm Ethan Case. And I'm Matt Nixon. In today's episode, the spring musical hits the stage. Seniors begin to prepare their strategies. A bowler reflects on her final season. Students look into careers in the trades. And we start thinking about spring break plans. In our first story, Coleman Padgett checks out Nora Spring Musical. Their good man, Charlie Brown, is Grace Lake North's premium theater company's newest 2022 musical. The show runs through the 10th, the 11th, the 12th, the 17th, the 18th, the 19th, all at 7 p.m. To talk about the upcoming show, I met with Drew Freis, who is the student technical director. What do you like so much about the current show? Uh, I think it's a really cute show, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and I think it's exactly what we need right now, just with everything going on. What do you do as the student technical director? Uh, well, right now we are, uh, I will work and run all the prop stuff backstage and I'll make sure that actors are actually getting to their places on time. And then throughout the show, like before, I've been helping construction building all of the sets. Your good man, Chella Brown, is now performing. March 10th, the 11th, and the 12th, as well as the 17th, the 18th, and the 19th. All shows are at 7 p.m. If you'd like to buy tickets, you can go to the QR code located on any of the posters around the school, or go to the Green Room Theater Company's Instagram account, and in the bio, you can see a purchasing link. Thanks, Coleman. I've heard it's a great show. Next, get your scorecards ready as Max Krieger finds about this year's version of Senior Assassin. Action, betrayal, and water guns. Today, we will be talking to Peter Meyer about this year's upcoming Senior Assassin. So Senior Assassin is a competitive tradition every year that's hosted by the seniors for the seniors. And it's where everybody is assigned a target and you have to eliminate them with a water gun. And it's a super fun tradition that we always do. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That sounds wonderful. How do you participate in Senior Assassin? Sign up right now is open. Um, it's, been, it's being posted around social media. We have a Twitter for it and a website. So if you're interested in finding the link, you can always contact me. Um, if not, there's other people that also have the links as well. That sounds great. When is Senior Assassin? Senior Assassin starts March 14th and sign up closes at the beginning of March. And then the payment is just due that next week. So around March is uh, when we start. Nice. Right, so and the final question is, are there any specific rules that we should know when participating in Senior Assassin? Um, the full list is listed on the website. There's definitely a good amount of things that you will need to know going into it. So I do recommend checking there. But overall, just don't be dumb, be safe, and just have fun. Awesome. Thank you, Peter. Good information, Max. Stay on your toes, everyone. And now we go to Charlotte Schaefer, who talked to Show Jenkins about her last season as a Knights Bowler. The winter sports season is now over, which means that bowling is too. The girls bowling team has had a great season this year, and with its end, it is now the last high school season that seniors will play in. This past season was honestly probably the best season we've had so far. I, first of all, loved the amount of people that we had this season because this was by far our biggest team of my four years here. And I think it's really cool how just over time, a lot more people have kind of come to bowling. Um, and overall, I think it was just our best season performance wise and it really set up like the next four years after I leave because we had so many freshmen come in that they're going to be an amazing team by the time they're all seniors. Personally, I guess in my own bowling, it's being like more comfortable with missing a shot and being able to come back after like I get a gutter, like um, not beating myself up so much after really bad shots because we all have bad shots. And then I guess also just that we kind of have built the bowling team up a lot, you know, coming in as freshmen, we were like, the people at least that I've grown up with since freshman year, we were like five carols that just came in and no one else did. So just being able to kind of have the bowling team grow and become more of a family has been really, really nice. I know bowling isn't one of like the most popular sports that everyone goes to watch, but it was by far the best decision that I ever made freshman year, and I didn't even make the decision. My mom told me to try out, and it was the best thing I could have done. Like, bowling 
changed my life 100% in the best way. So if you aren't on the team already, even if you are horrible at bullying, like you will grow. It is amazing. I would really join it. And then for the girls on the team, I guess just keep coming back. Like make sure that you're as much of like a family as you are a team. Cause I think that's a really important part of bowling. The one thing everyone always says is that they love our community on the team. So just make sure you keep like growing and fostering that. Even though bowling is over for this year and seniors are going on to do other amazing things, their impact on the team will surely last for years to come. Thanks, Charlotte. Now, Chris Lantman shows that the trades are a great choice for some students after high school. As we get closer to the end of the school year, many seniors are looking at the next chapter of their lives. For many, it will be college in the fall, but for others, it's a much less talked about option. While no path is truly clear and cut, the path into the trades can be much rockier. I was able to sit down and talk with Mrs. Applehands to discuss how the school and the administration can help students through the path into the trades. For many students like myself, the first question was simply, where do I start? I have a button uh, being put on the One Stop Night Shop. So if you go to the uh, Grays Lake North uh, main website, right on that front page is um, the One Night one night stop shop, I believe it's called. Um, and then that'll bring you into um, a, a list of these different um, buttons. And so there's gonna be one for the College and Care Career Resource Center. Mm -hmm. And um, that'll bring you to the page that I keep updated. And um, then just to the side, there's like little sub pages. Yeah. And there's going to be one uh, that's career technical and trade school information. Just uh, It's just a place to start with different unions. There's a site on there called apprenticeship.gov. And you are able to put in your uh, location or where you're looking. And it'll bring up um, positions that are out there. You can also just reach out to unions. Once you have decided to go into the trades, there are two main paths to start off with, apprenticeships and trade schools. The apprenticeships are more hands-on work opportunities and you, uh, you earn money while you're learning the trade. In the trade school, they do have hands-on, but you're paying to go to school and trade schools are usually more specifically geared. I think it's also important to provide some insight on why a trade may be a little more beneficial for some people. Well, the the, the benefits of, of going into a trade is uh, it's cheaper and shorter training before you would become a journeyman. Jobs in the trades are very well paid. Job security, because you're always gonna need the tradesmen, uh, you know, plumbers, electricians, mechanics, th those, you're always gonna need those. In carpentry alone, there's a 360% demand increase. These day-to-day -day jobs are having higher and higher demands as the years go on. If you like working with your hands and are looking for something new, the trades just may be for you. Really good information, Chris. And finally, Kelly Apple finds out what plans Knights have over spring break. Hey Knights, I know you've all been working really hard lately, but spring break is right around the corner and here's what some of you are doing. For spring break, I'm going to Florida for a hockey camp. So for spring, I'm going to be going to Jacksonville to visit my sister at college. So it should be fun. I'm going to go to the beach, have a good time. For spring break, I'm going to Marion, Illinois for baseball. For spring break, I'm going to Boston, Massachusetts to go visit my college, Northeastern University, because they're having welcome days for admitted students. And then I'm flying to Arizona to see my grandparents for a couple days. For spring break, I am flying into the Keys and spending a week with um, a bunch of friends. We hope, we hope you have, have a great, great spring break. break. That wraps up another episode of Night's News. Be sure to follow us on social media. I'm Ethan Case. And I'm Matt Nixon. And, and thanks, thanks for, for tuning in. in. Just go back a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>